Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to solve force problems that have multiple objects in them. There's two questions I wanna look at, one where the boxes are stationary and another problem where the boxes are moving. I'll probably do the moving one in a separate video, so this one's just gonna be when the boxes are stationary. So before we get started with this problem, I just wanna remind ourselves what my three-step process is for solving force problems. Step one, you wanna draw the FBD, the free body diagram. That's the picture that has all the forces on it in all the different directions, and you label the forces. Then I say there's a step 1.5. That is, you need to split any forces at an angle into their X and Y components. We did the same thing in kinematics, and now we're gonna do the same thing with forces. Then we get to step two. Step two is the Newton's second law equations. There's two of them. There's F net X and F net Y. Typically I write F net X is the forces pointing to the right minus all the forces pointing to the left. And then I set that equal to mass times acceleration, specifically the acceleration in the X direction. Then for the Y direction, you can probably guess it. It's the forces going up minus the forces going down. And that's equal to mass times acceleration in the Y direction. And these two accelerations are usually not the same thing. And then finally, step three, very simple, just solve using math. If you're bad at this step, then this video really isn't gonna help you. I'm focusing on the physics side today. But this is the three step, well, three and a half step process we're gonna use to solve any force problem, including if there's multiple objects. The only difference, if I do have multiple objects, this free body diagram right here, I'm gonna draw one for every object. So if I have 10 objects, I need 10 free body diagrams. You'll never see that, that's too many objects, but that's theoretically what you would do. And then the other thing that's different is for F net X and F net Y, you can write an equation in the X and the Y direction for every box individually, and you can write one for the system, which is where all the boxes or whatever are combined. Now that's not very clear unless I have an example to show you, which I do. So let's go ahead and look at a very famous example in physics. I have three boxes stacked on top of each other like this. Box A, box B, and box C. I'm gonna say the mass of box A is two kilograms, the mass of box B is five kilograms, and the mass of box C is 11 kilograms. And my question is gonna be, what is the force of box A on box B? And then I'm gonna ask for the force of box B on box C. And that's the question, so how do I do this? Well, the first thing we gotta do is, of course, the free body diagram. If you draw the free body diagram right here on this picture, it's not gonna be a very good idea because you got like all these forces going on here and they're all overlapping, very confusing. So instead what I'm going to do is, I'm going to draw all the boxes individually. It doesn't matter which one I do first. So here's A, here's B, and then here's C. So for box A, what forces are acting on box A? There are two. There's the force of gravity pointing down and a normal force pointing up. So I'll say FG and pointing up, I'll say FN for the normal force. One thing I do wanna warn you as I'm writing these, I am going to change the names of these forces as the problem goes on because calling it FN and calling it FG is actually not a good idea, and I'll explain why in a minute, but the reason why I'm writing this is this is what you would be doing the first time you try it, and then you realize it's not a good naming convention. But now let's go to box B. Box B obviously has gravity and a normal force as well, but there is a third force acting on it, and that is the force of box A on box B. So what I'm saying is for box B, I have the force of gravity, FG going down, I have a force of FA on B pointing down, and then I have a normal force pointing up like this. Now, again, the reason why this is not good is because if I have it written like this, then that means these normal forces are the same and these forces of gravity are the same, and they're obviously not the same, they're different boxes. So what would I do for a better naming convention? First of all, I would say this is force G comma A, and this is FG comma B. And obviously, C is gonna have FG comma C in a minute. Now for FN, I'm not gonna call it 
FN comma A and FN comma B? Because once again, there is a better name for it. Where is this normal force coming from on A? Where is the normal force coming from on A? What is A touching? A is touching box B. Therefore, the normal force is FB on A. And I know that's not obvious, but I'm telling you now so you can see it on your own the next time you try this problem. Another thing you need to know is because of Newton's third law, force B on A is equal to force A on B. They're equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. That is Newton's third law. That's how it's used in practice. And then what do you think this Fn is right here on box B? Well, where is that normal force coming from? It's coming from box C. So I better write, instead of Fn, I'm gonna write force of C on B, like that. Now finally we're on to box C. Box C again has three forces acting on it. A force of gravity pointing down, Fg comma C. It has a normal force pointing up. What's this coming from? It's coming from the ground. So I would say the force going up is F ground on C. And there's a bunch of different things you can call this. I mean, honestly, this is like a lot of letters. And so maybe what I would do instead of calling it ground on C, maybe I just call it FN. And the reason why this one gets to be FN is because it's not coming from another box. It's coming from the ground. And I don't have a mass for the ground or the mass of the earth, nor should you. That would be very bad if you were using those numbers. So anyways, I'm here so far. I am missing one force on C. It is the force from box B above it. And that's gonna be pushing down on it, which basically means force B on C is pushing down. And you may be wondering now, but what about box A? Isn't box A technically pushing down on C as well? And the answer is kind of, I know what you mean if you think that, but the problem is box A is not directly touching box C so it doesn't show up in the free body diagram. So in other words, this is it. These are my three free body diagrams for this problem, and that is it for step one. Honestly, step one's the hardest part of this problem because I bet it would take a few tries for you to really understand this and get it right on your own. But once you get step one done, the rest of the problem is generally easy. So then we'd go into step 1.5, splitting forces at an angle into their X and Y components. As you can see, there are no forces that point at an angle, so that would be silly. So we're skipping step 1.5 and going straight to step two, which is Newton's second law, F net X and F net Y. Like I said earlier, there are, I guess in this case, eight different options I could do for my net force equations. Let me write them all out just so you see what I mean. I can do F net comma X comma A for box A. I can do F net comma Y comma A for box A. I can do F net comma X comma B for box B. I can do F net comma Y comma B for box B. You can clearly see the pattern I'm going with here. So the next one's X comma C and Y comma C. But then there's two more equations. It's for the system. That's the last two. F net X comma Cis for system and F net Y comma Cis for system. The system is all the boxes combined. You should always start this one if your boxes are moving. Since our boxes are stationary, we don't have to start with the system. We can either do A, B, or C. And so what do we want to solve for? Well, the first question is force of A on B. And remember, since B on A is equal to A on B, looking at either box A or box B would make the most sense. And I'm here to say that looking at box A is going to be the best one. The reason why is if you choose box B, you don't know what this force is, C on B. And so you're going to get stuck in the math if you choose box B. So we're going to look at F net Y for box A. So F net Y comma A is equal to all the forces pointing up, which we said was force B on A, minus the forces going down. That was F G comma A. And then I said it equal to mass times acceleration. Now, I know this acceleration because the boxes are not moving. That acceleration is zero. So then F B on A, which is what I'm solving for, minus F G A. I know what the force of gravity is. It's mass times gravity. Mass of A is two, G is 9.8. That's the numbers that go in for F G A. And then that just equals zero. So then if I have my calculator, I can easily solve this. 2 times 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.
The answer is 19.6 newtons. That is the force of A on B or B on A. They're the same force. That part's done. I'm now going to go to finding the force of B on C. Remember, I can either do C on B or B on C. These two forces are equal to each other. So it doesn't matter if we're looking at box B or box C. Once again, though, it would not be smart to look at box C because we don't know what this Fn force is. So instead, we're going to look at F net Y for box B. That's going to be the smartest choice. And so that's going to be F net Y comma B is equal to all the forces going up, which is the force of C on B minus the forces going down. There are two forces going down and they both get minus signs FGB and force of A on B. And again, that's equal to mass times acceleration. Once again, this acceleration is zero because the boxes are not moving. So then simplifying this force of C on B minus force of gravity on B. That's mass times gravity for box B. Mass B is five kilograms times G is 9.8. And then minus A on B, we just found to be 19.6. That equals zero. From here, it's just algebra. I trust you can do this part. This is the easiest part of the problem. And if I do it correctly, then I get 68.6 newtons and that is the force of c on b or b on c you'll notice it's significantly heavier than the first answer and that's for two reasons number one the mass of a is significantly less than the mass of b second mass b has that extra force pushing down on it from box a in other words imagine your little brother's laying on top of you there's so much force going on there and so it looks like for this one we solved the problem and we didn't even need to go to box c which is nice. But when would I use box C? I would use box C if there was a, another part of this question that actually wanted me to find the normal force. And it would be very similar to what we just did for box B and you can try that on your own. And if you want, you can post your answer in the comments section. But that's really it. That's all I have to say about this problem. In the next video, we're going to be looking at forces with multiple objects, but those objects are going to be moving and we're gonna see how it's slightly different. So thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.